Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu Amma ba'd fa'awzu billahi min ashaytuan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Surat Wal Mustaqim Surat Wal Wazina An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maktubi Alayhim Walad-Zalim Our revered Amir and missionary in charge of Tanzania, the revered, respectable members of the Majlis Amla of Jamaat Ahmadiyya Tanzania, my colleague, dedicated missionaries of Tanzania, elders and the members of Jamaat Ahmadiyya Tanzania, I extend to you greetings from your brethren in Ghana. And their greeting is Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Mishmiwa Amir Jamaat. Maybe you come here. Wa Jamaat of Tanzania. Wa Mishmiwa Biongozi wa wa jamati ya Tanzania Mwazamu Wazamu wa Bashiri wa Jumia Islamu wa Madia Tatu Tanzania Wazee wa jamati ya Madia Tanzania Mwiko hapa Na nubu wote Wana jamati wote mwiko huria Nina kupatie ni salamu Kuproga kwa nubu zetu Wa jamati ya Ghana Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu I've been asked to tell you something about Jamaat Ahmadiyya Ghana, but this topic is a vast ocean, and it's a great challenge for me as to where to start and where to end. Nime pata maelekezo ya kwamba ni eleze mbeleenu kubi ya yumi islamu Ahmadiyya Ghana, lakini kwa kweli, Mada hiyo ni uwanda mkubwa sana ni bahari pana Amba kuhata na pata shida ya kuelewa nianze wapi na nishie wapi First and foremost I will want to congratulate all of you For such a beautiful and successful Jalsa Salana I least expected that at Ejasa Salana, Tanzania, this great number of participants will be available. And uh, I am happily impressed, and it gives me courage. And, and it encourages me to keep it up. What is it to keep up? The flag of Ahmadiyya, the true Islam, to keep it flying. Jambo la kwanza kabisa, nina kongezeni, kabisa kwa ushiriki wenu, kwa mahuduru yenu, kwa matayarisho yenu, ya jasa salana, na jinsi muligo weza kufanikisha au kutekeleza jasa salana yenu hii kwa mafanakio makuwa. Kwa hakika, Hili linanipa picha, linanipa faraja, linanipa matumaini kwamba kupitia nyingi basi bendera ya jamati ya Ahmadiyya katika nchi ya Tanzania ila shaka itapepe mshuwa juu kusaidi. However, 
what I will want you to know is that as you gather here, and I believe in your thousands, it is a very great achievement, but we must take it as a beginning, as an initial achievement. We have a great and greater responsibility because when your brethren of the Ghana Jamaat, they convey for an annual jalsa of this nature, they count in thousands of 40,000, 50,000, and sometimes above that. Right. Nina Pomenia and Apenda, Muenera Pamba, Pamonia, Mafanikio, Maturi, Nava Sema, Yama Uyeno, now together the Ueno, the Ueno, the Salana, like in Muesa, who he can accompany a poor man, Ya Maendeleo, the Matia Madia, Tanzania, Kwani kwa Hakika, Wakati Nini, who may be a poor wingy book, Nuze, who got to get a gun, when you just Salana and Wakahu. Wamefuria kwa maelfu wa kwa kiwango cha elfu arobaini elfu hamsini na kwenda ni. What we must know is that Africa has a great duty towards the world. Africa scientifically is proving to be the place where life started which in effect means that religion started here in Africa. And therefore, Africa is bound to be the center of the world. And Africa is bound to be the flag hoisters of Islam. And when you talk of the victory of Islam, that Africa will lead the world towards the total victory of Islam, insha'Allah. Yama wala na penda mwenyewe ni kwamba Afrika inao wajibu na jibu mkubwa wa jibu mkubwa mbele ya mwenyezi. Afrika ni mahala ambapo kwa mwethibitishwa kisayansi kwamba nipo mahala ambapo uhai uliansia. Afrika nipo mahala ambapo imethibitishwa au inathibitika kisayansi kwamba ndio katikati ya dunia Afrika ndipo mahala ambapo inatarajiwa sasa na inatazamiwa kwamba itakuwa ndio kitovu ndio kituo au ndio katikati ya maendeleo ya Uislamu katika siku zijazo Hazrat Muslim Maud radhiallahu ta'ala and who makes us understand that all nations of the world have had their day. Asia has ruled the world. The Soviets have ruled the world. Europe, Britain have ruled the world. America is now ruling the world. That is to say that all groups of people in the world they have risen to become world powers. That the only one which is left now and the next world power in the world will be Africa.
kama ni bara lenye nguvu wakati today as we sit here i believe that some of you will see this as very remote because you look your, to yourself as poor people and how it's going to happen that you will become the rulers of africa forgetting that at the time of rasul karim muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam those who rallied around him were the very poor ones and the glad tidings that he gave them was that they will rule the world and islam will become the predominant religion in the world such that the palaces of the czars of russia will call come under the rule of islam and lowly placed slaves like hazrat bilal who comes from among us will wear the bangles that the kings of those empires used to wear it actually happened and islam ruled the world it will therefore certainly happen that islam started ruling the world with the time of hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that at the end of time at the time of his servant hazrat masih maul alayhi salatu wassalam the second rainy season of islam will come again and then islam will rule the world the second time leo muslimu maneno haya kwamba sisi watu maskini na wanyonge na wachache tutaiongoza nini mtu anaweza kusema kwamba tunasema maneno gani lakini kwa hakika hata wakati wa mtukufu mtume Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wakati alipowaambia watu wachache wanyonge maskini wakati alipowaambia watu watumwa kina hata tajila wa wangu ya kwamba nyinyi si mtafika muda iongoza dunia wakati alipowaambia hata bila kwamba si mtafika utavaa baridi za ufalme a uh, zamana wa ufalme wa kisa bila shaka wakati huo kila mtu angeliona kwamba haya ni maneno ya kipuzu lakini kwa hakika zama zilifika uislamu ukashinda na yale yote yaliyosemwa na mtukufu mtume Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yakatimia yote kila nukta na nguvu yake kwa hivyo bila shaka ni bishara ni maneno ya leo kusema kwamba au ya leo tabiriwa na mazishi kufa kwa Islam wa Madia na Islam kwamba zama hizi zama za pili zama za ushindi wa pili wa dini kufu ya Islam kwamba Islam ilishinda katika zama za kwanza za mtukufu wa Salam ya Mwenyewe lakini baadaye akatabiri kwamba Islam itashinda tena katika zama za mtumishi wake Masihi aliyeye wa Islam kwa hivyo kwa hakika hili nalo pia litatimia kwamba wafuasi wale wa Masihi aliyeye wa Islam hata kama wanaonekana ni wachache ni wanyonge kiasiani na wao pia watapewa ushindi I want you to understand that from the pronouncements of Khulafai Ahmadiyya from the utterances of the Khulafa of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wassalam the second victory and final victory of Islam over the whole world is linked is linked with the rise of Africa and Africa becoming a world power the two are one and the same thing ina kwenda mwele sawa na maelezo ya mafalifu wa wasi ya lehi hiyo wa islam ni kwamba ushindi wa jamati ahmadia ume unganishwa na ushindi wa africa kama taifa au kama bara la mungu hayo mambo mawili yote yameunganishwa kwamba yanakwenda pamoja au yataenda pamoja kwamba ushindi wa Islam utahesabiwa kwa ushindi wa Afrika 
na vile vile upande wa pili ushindi wa Afrika utasaidia kwa maana ushindi wa Islam if if Africa will be the flag bearer of Islam and lead to the universal victory of Islam and if Africa on the back of Ahmadiyya the true Islam should become a world power then we need to ask ourselves me and you who are the Africans that I talk of that what is and what are our responsibilities towards this victory iwapo africa itafanya kuwa ni bara ni taifa la mungu iwapo litafanya iwapo ahmadiyya nayo itafanya kwamba ni kundi itakalopewa ushindi wakati Africa ikiwa ime iko nyuma au imebebwa na Ahmadiyya jambo ambalo mimi na wewe tunapaswa tujiulize ni hili kwamba ni lipi jukumu letu ni upi wajibu wetu sisi kama wa Afrika kwenye mafanikio ya jambo hili Allah Taala raised Hazrat Masiima alayhi salatu wassalam and commanded him to disseminate his message throughout the corners of the world and give him the assurance that he, Allah, will assist him to get this message to go to all the corners of the world. He was an Indian. In order to achieve this aim, Hazrat Masih Mawlana and his Khulafa sent their own people they are blood relations, Indians and Pakistanis like them, to go out to Africa in the difficult terrain of Africa and make lots of sacrifices so as to sow the seed of Africa in various parts of the continent known as Africa. They did that in order to fulfill the responsibility that God gave them so that on the day of judgment they will be able to say that yes yes allah we said the bake to the responsibility you gave us and indeed we can confirm that we implemented it that is why you see these young men pakistanis indians struggling along with us here through very difficult hard terrain to disseminate the, the message of islam Allah mtukufu ali muahidi masihi ya lehidi wa islamu ya hudu wale kwamba ata ufukisha ulumbe wake katika kila kona ya dunia na jamati ya kwadia kupitia masalifo wake ikaanda yeshi ambalo mingoni wawo kilikuwa na nuku zao wadamu kutoka india na pakistan na kuwatuma sehemu mbalimbali za dunia hasa ikiwemo Afrika wakija katika mazingira magumu kabisa wakiishi katika mazingira ya ndani katika Afrika kwa lengo hili la kufikisha uyumbe wa Masihi ya Dini wa Islam kwa lengo hili la kutufanya sisi tuweze kupokea baraka hii ya Mwenyezi Mungu kwa hiyo leo sisi ni wajibu wetu utafakari pia na sisi tunalo jukumu gani baada ya kupokea Allah is the witness and I am the witness and you sitting down here you are the witnesses to the fact that the pledge that they made to Allah they have fulfilled it but what we must know is this that the fulfillment of your pledge ends here which is to bring us the message of Ahmadiyya, the true Islam. As far as, as far as the nature of the plant of Ahmadiyya and Ahmadiyya growing to have flowers and have fruits and becoming a world power, 
and through to and truly becoming the dominant religion in the world that now is mine and you your part of the agreement that what is it that we can do also to fulfill this part of our agreement with the almighty allah It is not going to be very easy and simple assignment. Allah Ta'ala, His Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, they did not have it easy. They had to make sacrifices of their wealth, their honor, and their lives. Hazrat Masih Maud Wasallam and his companions and his countrymen did not have it easy. They had to make a lot of sacrifices. And even till date, our brethren in Pakistan are still continuing to make the sacrifices. They are still being persecuted in this 21st century. Their mosques are being demolished. They are prevented from calling the Azan. It has never dampened their spirits. But they continue saying whether you do this to us or you do that to us, we have a pledge with our Creator and we will fulfill it. And they therefore continue to persevere. If we must fulfill our part of the pledge, then we must know that we cannot fulfill it easily. On a silver platter, we cannot get it. We also must make sacrifices. We must know that the same conditions, we are going to face them. People will fight us. They will kill us. We will struggle with poverty. But we will have to use our wealth and place our own selves, our own blood at the service of Ahmadiyyad. And it is only then and that which will make it possible for us to also to be able to fulfill our pledge, the final pledge to the whole of humanity, which is for us to hold high the flag of Ahmadiyyad, the true Islam. And through Islam, we as Africans, for Africa to rise, riding on the back of Ahmadiyyad, to become a world power, to signal the universal victory of Islam, inshallah. Lakini ya kasipa kwa matuwelewe Hili Au hii sika zirahisi Na haitukuwa kazi zirahisi Kasema kwa kawaida na kwa hakika Kazi kubwa ya kujitolea Kwa inatakiwa Katika kufikisha ushindi Kwenye hatuwa yoyote wa kilini Angalieni maisha ya mkuku Mtume Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam Na masohaba zake Jinsi wali kujitolea muhanda wa hali ya juu Jinsi wali kutewa wakfu wa hali ya juu mpaka kupeleka Uislamu kwenye ushindi. Hivyo hivyo angalia masihi ya leo wa Uislamu na maswahaba zake jinsi walivyotoa wafu jinsi walivyojitolea mhanga maisha yao mali zao heshima zao kwa ajili ya ushindi wa Ahmadiyya. Lakini waangalieni ndugu wa India na Pakistan leo a muhanga wanaojitolea ndugu wa India na Pakistan walioko Ulaya walioko Uingereza 
kiwango cha kujitolea kwao kilipo kikubwa hao wote wamesimama na kuonyesha na kuiambia dunia inayowatesa kwamba fanyeni chochote tunachofanya sisi tutahakikisha ya kwamba tunatimiza kiapo chetu cha kuipeleka Ahmadia kwenye ushindi basi na sisi pia wa Afrika kama kweli tunataka tuone Ahmadia ikishinda wakati sisi tumebebwa na Ahmadia au tumeibeba Ahmadia basi lazima tuwe tayari tujiandae kuwa tayari kujitolea mhanga wa hali ya juu mwelewe kwamba siku itafika ambapo ndugu zetu wa Afrika watakapotuona kwamba tunaelekea kwenye kupata ushindi watakuja juu watakutesa watatuua kwa hiyo mwe tayari tujiandae kutoa damu zetu kutoa uhai wetu kutoa heshima yetu na kila kitu chetu kwa ajili ya ushindi wa Ahmadi I want to caution my brethren the Ahmadi Muslims of Tanzania that if there is any Ahmadi Muslim who since he became an Ahmadi or since the time he was born an Ahmadi he has never faced challenges because of Ahmadiyat he has had a smooth sailing throughout it is to say that he should do self introspection he should look at himself maybe his faith is not complete any ahmadi whose faith is complete you will face challenges because it is after you have faced challenges and overcome those challenges that your faith can be complete and you can be proud that you are a true committed ahmadi muslim ninapenda kuambia ndugu zangu wana jamaa wa Tanzania kwamba yeyote mwana jamaa yeyote kati yetu kama amejiunga natoki ya siku aliyojiunga au kama amezaliwa natoki ya siku alipozaliwa katika Ahmadiyya yuko na anaishi kwa salama amani vizuri hana changamoto aliyoipata kutoka kokote basi lazima ajitafakari lazima ajichunguze ndani yake ni kweli amesimama kwenye kujitolea kwenye kumtumikia Ahmadiyya kuitangaza Ahmadiyya kwa ukweli wa kwa sababu kwa hakika kama yeyote atasimama kabisa kidete kuitangaza Ahmadiyya kuitetea Ahmadiyya lazima atakabiliwa na upinzani na hapo basi ndipo wakati ambapo kwa kuji kwa kushikamana au kwa kushinda upinzani huo ndipo mtu anapopewa nguvu ya kusimama na kuonekana kwamba kweli anayo nafasi ya kuletea ushindi ujumbe wa Ahmadiyya The very first seed of Ahmadiyat was planted in Ghana in the year 1921 Therefore Ahmadiyat is 102 years old in Ghana today Mbegu ya kwanza ku siwa au kupandwa katika nchi ya Ghana mbele ya Ahmadiyya ili pandikizwa au ipandwa mwaka 1921 somewhere in the samani ili 1921 kiasi kwamba kusema leo jamati ya Ahmadiyya inao umri wa miaka 102 katika nchi ya Ghana kutokana na tunia 2025 Before Ahmadiyat came to Ghana it was believed by Ghanaians that Islam is only meant for the black man a white man cannot be a muslim wakati huo ilikuwa ikiaminiwa katika nchi ya Ghana na wazee wetu kwamba Uislam hasa ni dini ya watu weusi na kwa hakika mtu mweupe haiwezekani awe muislam but in the year 1918 or 1919 there about a group of muslims very well organized muslims one pious leader of ayas of their own saw in the dream that they were saying salat and a white man 
was the imam leading them in salah. That was very strange. So they said, how can a white man be a Muslim to the extent that he is leading us, we Muslims, in salat? ambapo katika ndozi hile akaona kwamba mtu mweupe anawaongoza kwenye sala. They tried na akajiuliza hii ni ndozi ya ajabu kiasi gani kwamba mtu mweupe ambaye kwa kawaida si Muislamu inakuwaje leo awe Muislamu kiasi cha kuongoza sisi kwenye sala. They tried their level best to know what is the meaning of this dream therefore. Luckily for them there was a Nigerian merchant who was literate who was in salt pond. A salt pond was a seaport. Ships used to come and dock there. And through that, he used to get copies of the literature review of religions. So he told them, I've been getting a book review of religions written by Muslims. And those Muslims are white people. And this is their address. And as the Bible said, the Kumba, how and who, what I took over the Hanaim Sana, would have put up Syria and Josie Hill, man, as the name. Now, the Sama Yapola Bahat, Jeva Kumba, Katika, I know Hill, and the Kumba, 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 They said, ah, these white people who are Kafirs, for them to have become Muslims and they love Islam so much, so much so that they are spreading the message of Islam and propagating literature on Islam, they must be true people. Give us their address. We will write to them. So they took the address and they wrote a letter to Hazar Khalifa to Masi Sani, the Muslim Himahud, Rajallahu Ta'ala, and tell him that they dreamt of a white Imam. And they got to know that they are those white people who are Muslims. Therefore, he should send them that white Imam to come and lead them, they the Muslims of Ghana. As the Bible said, from the past, we have to know what we have to do with this. We have to know what we have to do with this. We have to know what we have to do with this. We have to know what we have to do with this. We have to know what we have to do with this. Na wamefuta tarifa yote Usia na gazeti la mikro religion Nina mochapa na watu weupe Na wawo wana omba Wapatiwe imamu huyo weupe Wangozi nyoko wapatiwe imamu Ili ya wezi kukongoza Na wawo ni wa islamu kwa gana Hazrat Musli Mawud gave them a reply And said That to test your faith 
whether you are serious about what you are saying and to establish your commitment if truly you want me to send you an imam you should send to me the money that will be used to buy a ticket for that imam to sit in a steamer in a ship and come to you send the money I will buy the ticket and send you an imam. So, those African Ghanaian Muslims, they contributed money for the ticket and sent it to him. And then he sent the first missionary to Ghana, who landed in Ghana in 1921 at Saltport. <laughs> Kama ni kweli wanahitaji wapelekewe kiongozi wapelekewe imam wapelekewe shekhi wa kusomesha basi wao pia wafitishe imani yao wafitishe commitment kwa maana ya kutoa kwao au tayari kwao kwa kumtumia na uwe kwa kumtumia fedha ya kiwango ambacho ataweza kununulia na uwe kumkatia na uwe kumkatia ticket huyo imamu anayetaka ili yaweze kumsafirisha kwa njia ya meli kwa njia ya stima wakati huo boti kutoka huko atakapotolewa mpaka katika nchi ya Ghana na wao wakachanga wanatochanga na kutuma kiasi cha fedha ambacho kilitosheleza kukata au kununua ticket ya meli kwa ajili ya sheikh ambaye walitumiwa mpaka mwaka 1921 Salt Pond is a town that was a seaport, so he came to Salt Pond. But the Jamaat, the Muslim Jamaat, their headquarters was not in Salt Pond. It was about 25 kilometers away from Salt Pond. So the members came to Salt Pond and they said, This missionary, this Imam is too precious. We don't have cars, no even bicycles. We walk. But we will not allow this man to walk. We will carry him in a palanquin. So the Muslims, they carried this mistress missionary in palanquin to cover that whole distance to send him to their headquarters for him to address them and to lead them in Salat the first time. And after they led them in Salat, all of them made bayah without asking questions. Ami saifu wana kumwambia bari hii ya kusimua kwamba baada ya sheke huyu kutumwa kwa katika mingi wa soto ambao kusingi ni mingi wa bandari kaskazini mwagana makao makuu wa ofisi kuu ya suni jamaati kwa wakati huo mwagana ilikuwa masafa kama ya kilomita 25 ndani kutoka pale maeneo ya baharini sasa hawa walikopewa tarifa kwamba Imamu huyu Sheikh huyu amefika walikuja kwa ajili ya kumpokea na walipofika walisema kwamba Sheikh huyu mgeni wetu huyu ni wa thamani sana kwetu kiasi hiki kwamba hatutomruhusu kutembea kwa watu huo ilikuwa kusafiri ni kutembea hatutomruhusu kutembea kwa mguu kwa masafa haya ya kilomita 25 au maili 25 badala yake waliamua kumbeba kwa aina ya viti vile ambavyo zamani wafalme na watu wengine machifu walikuwa wakibeba kwa hivyo na wao wakaamua kumbeba umbali huo mpaka kwenye msikiti wao na walipofika hapo akawaongoza wakamwambia kwamba waongoze katika swala akawaongoza kwa swala na baada ya kumaliza swala wote walifanya bayat bila ya hata mmoja kuuliza uliza au kuleta jambo lolote la upinzani <tos>
They met Maya and joined Ahmadiyyat. Right from that time, all the other Muslims in Ghana, they came together to stand against them, to fight them. They persecuted them and told them they have become kafirs. I told you to start with, they didn't believe that a white man would be a Muslim. And for you to accept a white Muslim means you accepted a kafir to be your Muslim. Therefore, you are all kafirs. They therefore persecuted them. And those Ahmadi Muslims, they told them, whether you persecute us or not, do whatever you want. But we are Ahmadis. We will not turn back on our faith. And we will ensure that we disseminate, we disseminate the message of Ahmadiyyat to all of you. And inshallah, we will plant the message, the tree of Ahmadiyyat in each and every town and region and corner in Ghana. That was the pledge they made. And today, today, if you go to Ghana, if you go to Ghana, Ahmadiyyat is so powerful in Ghana that even governments cannot decide on certain things without consulting Ahmadiyyat and without Ahmadis giving their consent for them to do it. That is, was the fruit of the spirit of dedication and the sacrifices and the firm faith they had in him. And they stood their grounds because they were convinced. Allah spoke to them about the truth of Ahmadiyyat. That is why they saw it in a dream. They said, we'll never turn back. We will conquer the whole of Ghana. And true and true, Ahmadiyyat, we can say that Ahmadiyyat has conquered Ghana. By Allah's grace. <laughs> Baada ya taarifa kusambaa kama eneo kadhaa ya Ghana waislamu wengine waliwajia na kuamini nyinyi mmeshakuwa makafiri kiasi hiki wakati ambapo sisi hatuamini kwamba hata mtu mweupe anaweza kuwa Muislamu nyinyi mnamchukua mtu mweupe na kumfanya kuwa imamu nyinyi makafiri wa aina gani lakini akasema kwamba kundi hili wana jamati hao mwanzo walisimama imara walisema kwamba sisi Baada ya kujiunga na jamaa Ahmadiyya hatuwezi kurudi nyuma kama. Nyinyi fanyeni mnapotaka kufanya. Mtutese mnapotaka kutese kwa sababu walisema tutakuteseni sana mpaka muone kwamba mnachofanya ni kibaya. Wakasema mfanye mnachotaka kufanya, mtakachoweza kufanya sisi hatutoacha Ahmadiyya hata siku moja. Bali si hivyo tu kwamba hatutoacha, tutahakikisha kwamba tunaepanda mti huu wa Ahmadiyya katika kila mji na kijiji cha nchi hii ya Ghana. Na msema msema kwamba alhamdulillah leo kwa hakika inaonyesha kwamba ndugu hao wa mwanzo wametimiza kiapo chao na ahadi yao waliotoa. Kwa Mwenyezi Mungu alipowapa msaada, alipowapa nguvu, alipowapa yakini kwamba Ahmadiyya ni ya kweli, basi kweli wameisambaza katika kila kona ya Ghana. Na leo msema msema kwamba katika Ghana jamaa kwa fadhila Mwenyezi Mungu inayoogopa kiasi hiki kwamba hata serikali ya Ghana haiwezi kufanya maamuzi yoyote makubwa bila ya kuiambia jamaa bali bila ya kupata ushauri kutoka jamaa stand here before you. I am myself the product or the outcome of persecution meted out to Ahmadi Muslims by the non-Ahmadi Muslims. Because my father accepted Ahmadiyyat. He was an alim, a sheikh, big one, the leading one in the northern part of Ghana. 
a northern part of Ghana is that part of Ghana which is predominantly Muslim dominated. But when he accepted Ahmadiyya, they declared him a kafir. I My father, just before they declared him a kafir, married my mother. After marrying my mother, they declared him a kafir. But he was on his way to Mecca to perform Hajj. So he took my mother along with him to perform Hajj. They did not reach Saudi Arabia in time. So when they wanted to enter, it was time for them to close all the gates leading to Saudi Arabia. So they stayed back. After the Hajj, they entered Saudi Arabia. It therefore meant that they were to spend more than one year in Mecca. And that was the time I was born. When my father and mother and me as a baby, they returned to Ghana to our hometown. I was only five months, two weeks old. Go ahead. Five months, two weeks after that was my age, my uncles, no, no, the uncles of my mother, they came with a delegation to my father to inform him that you are a Catholic. But our senior, our elder brother, did not consult us before giving our daughter to you. And before we realized you have escaped with our daughter to somewhere where you said is Mecca, 
So we have come to confiscate our daughter. They took my mother forcefully away from my father. And my father told them, yeah, that is your daughter. You can take her away. But this my son is a precious son. If you touch him, you will see what will happen to you. I will feed him with porridge. And inshallah, he will grow. and give her to somebody to marry. And from that time onwards, they started persecuting the Ahmadi Muslims in that town. They boycotted all Ahmadi Muslims. No Ahmadi Muslims can fetch water from anywhere. No Ahmadi Muslim can go to the market. No Ahmadi Muslim can go to the farm. And if any Ahmadi Muslim dared to do that, they will beat him until he is crippled, he cannot walk again. Asema besides kwamba wakati huo baba yake aliwaambia kwamba yeye atamnyosha uji mtoto wake inshallah mpaka atakuwa. Lakini mama yake walimchukua umbali wa maili nyingi They finally declared my father somebody who is not wanted in the town. So they drove him out of the town. But when he went out, my father did not stop because he was a fighter. He went to the colonial administration. He insisted on his right that he has the right to believe in any religion and practice any religion. And nobody has the right to drive him away from his own town. He convinced the colonial governors and they said, yes, you are right. So they sent him back to the town, guarded by, by policemen, armed policemen. And they remained guarding him for a very long time until peace started raining in that town. And they warned the people that if any one of you raise a hand on this man again, you will be imprisoned. He has the right to practice his religion. That was the time serious preaching of Ahmadiyyad started and Ahmadiyyad started growing and growing and growing. 
Sema sema kwamba wakati huo hata baba alifukuzwa kutoka kwenye eneo lake kwa kwenye mji wake kwa kwenye mchacho alihesabiwa kwamba ni mtu asiyetakiwa kabisa katika eneo lile na akafukuzwa nje ya mji lakini baada ya kufukuzwa kwa sababu baba alikuwa ni mpamba nani hapo hapuridhika kuna kuna madhakimi bali alienda kwenye ofisi za serikali kwa sababu ilikuwa ni mtawala wa koloni akaeleza kwamba jamani mimi ni nani na ninayo haki gani na nimefukuzwa kutoka kwenye mji wangu bila haki kwa sababu mimi nina nimeamua kuamini imani na dini ninayotaka na hii bila shaka naona kama ni haki yangu kwa hiyo baada ya kuongea na uongozi wa serikali kwa kiwango uongozi ukashawishika kwa makweli huyu mtu anayo haki ya kurudi kijiji kwake kwa sema kwamba wakamrudisha kwenye mchana wakiwa wakimpa yani serikali ikampa ulinzi wa askari ambao walikuwa na silaha wakamrejesha kijijini katika hali hiyo na wakaendelea kumlinda pale kijijini kwa muda fulani mpaka hali ya amani iliporudi na wakati wanaondoka wakatoa onyo kwamba wao wanamwacha pale kijijini lakini mtu yoyote atakaye thubutu kumgusa basi ataona cha mtema kuni but father established with his colleagues they established Ahmadiyat very very strongly not only in that town but throughout the whole north but he died when I was still young. And before dying, he told my uncles that this is my son. I gave birth to him in Mecca. And there, when he was born, I pledged to God that I dedicate him to the service of Ahmadiyyat, the true Islam, for him to be a missionary. Therefore, I grew to get that opportunity. And I went to Pakistan to study. For eight years, I was in Pakistan before I returned. When I returned to Pakistan, I was 27 to 28 years old. And you will not believe me that that was the first time I got to know my mother. I saw my mother with my eyes like this. Because I came and I was a strong man and I asked them, where is my, my mother? And they showed me the village that she was. And I went, I saw her for the first time that day. And I took my mother with me back to our town. Alisema sema kwamba basi wakati huo baba yake alifanya maumivu sana ya nguvu na Ahmadia Mbai alikubaliwa sura ya kile hata katika maeneo kadhaa ya Ghana kaskazini na eneo lote la Ghana hapo na pale lakini baba yake wakati anakaribia kufariki akiwa ni kijana mdogo wa miaka kumi hivi aliwaita baba zake wadogo kwa maana ya ya kaka zake baba na ndugu zake na kuambia kwa majimani mimi kijana wangu huyu ambaye kwa sababu ya Mungu nilimzaa katika mji wa Maka na wakati alipozaliwa nilichukua ahadi kwa Mwenyezi Mungu na kumuomba kwamba huyu nina mtoa kwa ajili ya kuihudumia kwa ajili ya kutumikia Ahmadia na mimi mwenyewe sikuweza ku yani baba alisema mimi mwenyewe sikuweza kumwandaa na sawa na umri na jiona kwamba ninaondoka duniani lakini nakuombeni nyinyi mchukue ahadi mbele yangu kabla ya kufa kwangu kwamba mtamsaidia huyu muhakikishe kwamba mnampeleka rabwa kwa ajili ya kusoma Ahmadi na anasema alhamdulillah kwa Mwenyezi Mungu hilo lilitokea akapelekwa katika nchi ya Pakistan rabwa kwa ajili ya kusoma na pamoja na miaka mingi aliyokaa huko alirudi kwa mara ya kwanza ndio akaweza kumuona mama yake baada ya kurudi akiwa ni mtu mwenye nguvu na ukushawishi akawalazimisha wale kwamba nyinyi nionesheni mama yangu yuko hapo na ndipo akamweleza kwamba yuko kijiji fulani yuko hivi naye akaenda akaonana naye na baada ya mazungumzo akamchukua kumrejesha mahala ambapo yeye alikuwa anaishi Today as I stand here before you as an outcome of that those dedicated services Today if we remove the president of Ghana the speaker of parliament and a few other people. Or let me see, if you want the leading VVIPs in Ghana today, you will find my name. Not me, Muhammad bin Salih, but the Amir and missionary in charge of Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission, Ghana, as one of the leading important people in Ghana. <laughs> 
basi leo kama matunda ya kujitolea kule kwa wahamadi ya kwanza kama utamuuliza rais wa Ghana kama utamuuliza speaker wa Ghana mtu ambaye anao muhimu lakini akasema kwamba haiweki kwa namna nyingine kama utauliza kundi la watu wenye athari kubwa wanaweza kuweka athari kubwa katika viongozi wa Ghana basi utalikutia jina lake katika hiyo orodha na sio utalikutia jina lake kama ye kwa maana ya Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih lakini kama amiri na mbashiri mkuu wa Jumuiya ya Islam Muhammadia Khan nikiwa nimeandikwa pale kwa maana katika watu muhimu wa kuiongoza nchi ya Ghana two leading political parties in Ghana. We choose the government from one, the next time we go to the other, and that is what it has been going on. In that town, where Ahmadis were persecuted, I'm talking of where my father was, our town, and in which I grew up, today, the chairman of each of the two parties are Ahmadis. The general secretaries of both parties are also Ahmadis. The deputy chairman of the two parties are also Ahmadis. And Ahmadis are the leading, the richest people also in that area. And the people of that place depend on Ahmadis for their survival now. That is the reward they got for the sacrifices they made. They made lots of sacrifices. And today, Ahmadiyyad has become a power to be reckoned with. Those are the sacrifices that are expected of us here in Tanzania. I'm not saying that we should be aggressive. No. Islam means peace, humility. But what I'm saying is that we should be forceful. We should be forthright. We must be prepared to face persecutions. We must be prepared to make sacrifices. Our monies, our selves, own selves, even our blood, we should be prepared to make that sacrifices to establish Ahmadiyyat in Tanzania as it is in Ghana and even more than what has taken place in Ghana. And you have the capacity to do that. Kwa sababu ya kutonyesha 
jinsi ambavyo wale wanaojitahidi wale wanaojitolea mpanga kwa ajili ya Mwenyezi Mungu kwa ajili ya kutangaza ukweli ni vipi Mwenyezi Mungu anaweza kubadilisha hali ya kizazi chao katika muda mfupi tu kwa akasema kwamba na sisi basi ujumbe wake ni kwamba sisi wana jamaa wa Tanzania pia kama tunataka mabadiliko kama tunataka kuona mabadiliko ya kweli lazima tujitoe muhanga kwa ajili ya kutangaza ujumbe wa Ahmadiyya katika nchi ya Tanzania amesema hapo sasa kwamba hakusudii tuwe wagombi hakusudii kuanzisha fujo mitaani hapana uislamu ni amani lakini anachokusudia ni kwamba kwa kuhubiri kwa amani tujitoe kweli kweli tujitoe bila kujali mateso bila kujali kukashfiwa bila kujali kulaumiwa bila kujali kwa mali zetu hata damu zetu na bobidi zikitoka sio shida hicho kisiwe kikwazo cha kutuzuia ili mradi kwa hali yoyote iwayo tujitolee kwa ukweli heshima zetu mali zetu muda wetu kwa ajili ya kuitangaza kwa ajili ya kusambaza kwa ajili ya kuhubiri amadia na akasema kwamba hilo tunaliweza na anatuona kabisa tunayo nguvu tunayo nguvu kazi tunao uwezo ndani yetu wa kulifanya hilo basi tusimame bila ya kujali changamoto yoyote mbele yetu tutangaze Ahmadiyya kwa Tanzania wenzetu as i stand here today through the blessings of Ahmadiyya the sacrifices Ghanaians Ahmadis made towards establishing of Ahmadiyya the services that we are rendering to Ahmadiyya to such an extent that you can count more about 300 to 400 schools that are Ahmadiyat schools in Ghana. As I stand, the government of Ghana recognized me as a diplomat. Like any ambassador you will find who will be appointed to come to sit here in Dar es Salaam. And they've given me a diplomatic passport. And wherever I go to, I'm treated as a Ghanaian diplomat. I stop them. Or else, when I was coming here, they would have directed the Ghana High Commission, the High Commission to go to the airport to receive me and get a place for me to stay. But I said, no, I'm in religion. My family is here, the Ahmadis in, terms, in, in, in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> ambao serikali yenyewe ime inatambua juhudi na kazi kubwa ambayo Ahmadiyya inaifanya kwa nchi ya Ghana. Jamati ya Ahmadiyya ya nchi ya Ghana inamiliki shule zaidi ya 300 ambazo zinaendesha huduma za kielimu. Kiasi hiki kwamba Amir Mshiri Mkuu wa Ghana anatambulika kwa serikali ya Ghana kwamba ni mtu mwenye hadhi ya kibalozi. Kiasi kwamba amesema hata safari yake hii baada tu ya kuambia baba anaondoka walikuwa tayari serikali kumpa hali na heshima ya kibalozi kwamba aje hapa na ubalozi wa Ghana upewe amri upewe maelekezo kwamba wampokee amisai na wamtafutie makazi kwa hali ya kibalozi wakati yuko hapa nchini lakini alipo walipo sema hivyo wasema hapana mimi ni mtumishi wa dini na huko ninakwenda ninao ndugu zangu wa kidini na hao ndio ninao waendee kwa hiyo naomba tu muniwache hivi hivi The last presidential elections we held in Ghana are two, there are two major political parties. The elections start at 6 a.m. At that time, we said Fajr Salat in Ghana at 5 a.m. When I performed abortion and came out of the washroom, my telephone rang. It was one of the presidential candidates. He says, Amir, I'm relying on your prayers. Pray for me that Allah should grant me victory. It is your prayers I'm relying on. So please, I know this is the time you are going for your prayers. So please, 
remember me in that prayer. After I put on my dress and I opened my main door to move out of my house, my wife called me back. That my telephone is ringing. When I went back and picked it, it was the second presidential candidate who had also called. And when I picked it, he says, Amir, please pray for me. I'm depending on your prayers for success. I said, May Allah bless you. And inshallah, I will pray for you. That is the reward Ahmadis are getting in Ghana today because of the sacrifices, the sacrifices they have made and they continue to make and they are gaining all what they are gaining through Ahmadiyyat, the true Islam. It is because of their faith in Ahmadiyyat that all this is coming to them and more. And I will want to assure you very soon, you will hear of an Ahmadi being the president of Ghana, inshallah. It is not me. My name is Muhammad bin Sali. It is not me that they are giving that respect. They are giving it whoever was, if, if whoever could have been the Amir at this time, it is he they are giving to, the Amir and missionary in charge of Ghana. These two presidential candidates, again, both of them, each one of them, after he cast his vote, he, he, the first thing he, they did was to call me to say, Amir, I have casted my vote. I hope you prayed for me. Then the other one to call, Amir, I have casted my vote. I hope you prayed for me. I said, yes, I prayed for you. <laughs> Lakini pia ni hii anasema sio kama yanafanywa kwa ajili yake kama Muhammad bin Salah bali yanafanywa kwa ajili ya jamati ya Madia kwa ajili ya amiri na mshirika mkuu wa jamati ya Madia Ghana kasi kwamba anasema hata wale waheshimiwa wote walipokwenda kupiga kura zao maana tu walipopiga kila mmoja alipiga tena simu kwa bana Amir Said au Amir tayari nimeshapiga kura bado natarajia maombi yako ambia sawa nimekuombea na tunakuombea zaidi ya leo. Kwa sababu hii ndio hali si kwa ajili yake bali kwa ajili ya heshima ya jamati ya Ahmadiyya. My brethren I told you from the beginning that I don't know where to start. 
and I cannot tell where to stop. It is a lengthy story. A lot has taken place. But the fact is that Ahmadis of Ghana today, they are very thankful to the Almighty Allah. That is the message that I am leaving before you. That you must be prepared to make sacrifices. Let's make sacrifices. And we should know that people will come after us. But if we persevere, from what I have seen today, I believe in the next 10 years, the number of Ahmadis who will attend the Jalsa of Tanzania, here in Dar es Salaam, or whichever part of Tanzania that it will be, inshallah, will be 100% more than you people who are sitting down here today. And that will continue on end. And then you will be realizing the total victory of Islam. And you will be, a, you'll be proud of the fact that you contributed towards the victory of Ahmadiyyat. And Allah will receive you among the companions of Azad Masibud and who receive you among the companions of Rasulul Karim Muhammad Mustafa wasalam, and you would find yourself under the shade of the mercy of the Almighty Allah, insha'Allah. Lakini anasema kwamba mambo au jamati ya madia katika mambo ya dunia ya sema kwa dia gani ni mapana kiasi kwamba ni utazungumza na kuzungumza na kuzungumza lakini amesema jambo ambalo wanashipenda atuambie ni hili kwamba wana dunia wa sema kwa dia gani wa madia gani ni watu wanaoonyesha shukurani kubwa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu kubwa kabisa kwa kuendelea kujitolea na kujitolea kwa amesema na sisi huu ni ujumbe wake kweli na sisi pia kuonyesha shukurani kwa Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kujitolea katika dini ya Mwenyezi Mungu. Kujitolea kwa hali zote na kujitolea tunavyosema basi kujitolea. Na amesema kwamba anatuhakishia kwa anaoona sura na uwezo wetu. Anasema kwa anaoona kama tutashikilia kweli kweli tutangania kujitolea kwa ukweli kuhubiri kufanya kila kitu kwa ajili ya Mwenyezi Mungu basi miaka kumi ijayo lazima jalsa salama hii itakuwa ni kubwa asilimia mia moja zaidi ya ilivyo leo na akasema kwamba nguvu hiyo anakuona kunacho kikubwa tujitolee kwa ahadi zetu zote kwa ajili ya jamati if any one of you want to ascertain to the fact of the, these things that i'm telling you about the position of ahmadiyat in ghana get any one of those missionary students who studied in Ghana, either in Jamia Tulumbashiri or Jamia Ahmadiyya International, who are Tanzanians themselves. And they will tell you even much, much more than what I have told you, inshallah. <laughs> basi wala wasifanye juhudi kubwa amuone mmoja tu kati ya wanafunzi ambao sasa ni wabashiri walioenda kusoma jamii ya kumbashiri na Ghana amuulize hali ya nafasi ya jamati ya Ghana katika nchi ya Ghana na bila shaka atamueleza mengi na makubwa zaidi ya aliyo kasema yeye hapa God bless you and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you.